Hello and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. I'm Daryl Griffiths and this is my weekly 180 where I spend 180 seconds on the latest techie news that impacts the world of SAP. At the end, I'll pick my favourite to review in a little more detail in the cubicle. In my SAP Techie News this week, in a loosely connected item, Google has a blog post on whether undersea internet cables will be impacted by large solar storms. In the UK, we've had good visibility of the Northern Lights due to increased solar activity from Solar Cycle 25. And this links nicely to my SAP BTP disaster video, which I will link above here somewhere. I've also put the link to the Google blog in the description down below. From ERP today, IBM and SAP announce a partnership to infuse AI across industry-specific cloud solutions, as well as potentially bring IBM's flagship Granite LLMs to the SAP Gen AI hub. Granite language models are trained on trusted enterprise data spanning internet, academic, code, legal, and finance. The SAP Max Attention Summit 2024 replays are now available to watch on YouTube from the SAP News site. I thoroughly recommend Philip Hertzig's executive session, where we see glimpses of Jewel in action across a couple of different products and scenarios. Plus, we hear from an SAP customer on how they are benefiting from AI to reduce vendor invoice backlog and making use of SAP Signavio process insights. And listen carefully to what they have to say about data quality up front. The link is down below. Hasso Plattner, the last SAP founder still working for SAP, steps down from his role on the SAP Supervisory Board on May the 15th this year. The news site has a really great article on the history around Hasso Plattner and how he has shaped SAP over 52 years. Some great pictures on there also, and the link is in the description down below. On Business Wire, an article on Boomi's Boomi for SAP product, simplifying the move from SAP BW to SAP Datasphere. The article describes the Boomi for SAP as a low-code integration platform on AWS. The Boomi solution delivers a more efficient path to SAP Datasphere without the need to upgrade BW, as well as providing a form of data tiering by allowing aged data to be pushed out to Amazon Redshift, which implies is cheaper hosting than SAP Datasphere. One of the highlighted key benefits is an ability to select which SAP BW queries and BW info providers to move to Datasphere. Reading through the AWS Marketplace description, the Boomi product includes an ABAP-based core deployed onto the SAP system and a SaaS platform backend. But why oh why is the AWS Marketplace description so poor? It talks confusingly about HANA 2021, ECC 750 and ECC 731. See more on the link below. Lastly, an article on TechCrunch interviews Sophia Mendelssohn, SAP's Chief Sustainability Officer. Mendelssohn talks briefly about her own experiences that drive her and about the normalization of sustainability issues and related risks onto companies' books. In the article, it also mentions how SAP's own carbon offsets are handled, which may be of particular interest to some. The link is down below. My favourite item this week is the SAP news item on Hasso Plattner's final days at SAP. Life as a founder of a global technology company has got to be pretty exciting, enough to keep someone working who could have easily chosen to retire 15 or even 25 years ago. Think for a second, would you work for a company for 52 years? Now what if that was your company? Yes, very different story, yeah? No matter the current status of your SAP career, Hasso Plattner has actively influenced every single one of us, and he will continue to do that for decades to come. You might not agree with the way the HANA database has been pushed to the front of a line of supported databases, but for now, that strategy has actually paid dividends, quite literally. As we move into the AI epoch, the HANA database, as it happens, marries two fundamental requirements of a vector database, near real-time enterprise scale in-memory data access and database transactional persistence. The HANA database now moves to the cloud and powers SAP's BTP and is also undoubtedly behind some of SAP's other products. In the article, there are some questionable HANA marketing quotes, some of which are still debated today. However, could the same amount of innovation at SAP have happened so quickly if SAP did not invent its own enterprise database? Even if it was not the best database choice for ECC or even for s hana maybe the fact it existed has driven other innovations outside of those products. Undoubtedly, SAP HANA has also helped drive sales in hardware, in hyperscalers, in consulting. 
in some way or another, Hasso Plattner's quote about Hannah saving SAP? He might be right. It's not a long analysis this week, so to finish on a high note, did you know that in 2011, Hasso Plattner and Alexander Zeer co-wrote a book about in-memory data management, and the second edition was titled In-Memory Data Management, Technology and Applications. From 2006 to 2012, Alexander Zeer led the HANA Research Project at the Hasso Plattner Institute. To highlight how technology works in ways that are sometimes unintended, if we search walmart.com for the two names Hasso Plattner, Alexander Zeer, we get a load of results for plates and platters. And, oh wait, a highly technical, in-depth analysis of the impact of in-memory data management. As always, reference links are in the description down below, drop me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, bye bye. From SAP BW, blah, 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 blah.